Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Sandra and you're watching Christmas DIYs at the Schwoben's Nest. This first project is using some of these Dollar Tree wood trees that I found this year. I was so excited when I did find them. They're a little rough around the edges, so I'm going to take off the tags and then give them a little bit of sanding with some fine grit sandpaper just to clean them up. The trees aren't straight at the bottom, so I am going to take my little hacksaw and just cut them so they are flat across because I will be trying to stand these up. The next thing I'm going to do is start painting them around the edges and I'm going to start by painting the bottom edge with some red chalk paint. This chalk paint is from Deco Art. I get it at Michael's and it's super thick and only requires one coat. Once I get all around the outside edge, I'm going to paint just the back of the tree. I'll do the same thing with the other two trees, except I'm just going to switch out my colors. So for this one, I'm doing sort of a mossy green color. And for the third one, I'm going to use burnt umber. Once the backs were dry, I flipped it over and I'm going to paint all three of them white on the top, but I'm not going to go over any of the edges. I'm going to make sure that I just do the very top flat portion of the trees in white. And they took a couple of coats to cover because I wanted the white to be nice and crisp. I've got a garland tie from the Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of 12 and I'm going to just give it a little bit of a haircut. I don't like it when the needles are that long, especially when I'm trying to create something in miniature form. It just looks a lot nicer when they're cut down. I'm going to bend part of this garland into a circle because I want to create a little miniature wreath for on top of one of the trees. So once I get the size that I like, I'm just going to take my snips and cut the rest off. Before I can start attaching things to my trees, I want to distress them. I'm using one of these wide little chip brushes and I've got it dipped in some black paint and I'm basically just dry brushing a little bit around the edges of the tree. I'm just coming in from the outside to make sure that I don't get anything on the natural wood part. Then I'm going to drag the chip brush very lightly across the tree going in a vertical fashion as you see me doing here and again very lightly. I don't want any really dark lines on this. I just want it very lightly distressed and I'm going to do this for all three of the trees. Using hot glue I'm going to glue the two ends of the little mini wreath together and just hold them until the glue sets. I did end up making it a touch tinier than originally planned because I wanted it to not look too oversized on this little mini tree. I also created a simple little shoestring bow from some red and white gingham ribbon that also came from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue that right on top of the little wreath. I'm going to hot glue the wreath right on top of the first Christmas tree and this is the one with the red background. For the brown tree, I've got some little mini hemlock pine cones that I picked up at my cottage last year and I had a bunch left over. I'm just putting them in sort of a wreath arrangement and I'm going to hot glue them into place. I know the Dollar Tree carries some mini pine cones and sometimes you can find some little ones like this in the pack, but if you're looking specifically for these teeny tiny ones, I do have a link for hemlock pine cones down in my description box, but I can't guarantee that they're still available. I wanted to give this little pine cone wreath a gingham bow as well and I wanted to use black and white but I didn't have any of the real thin stuff so I'm just using my hot glue gun and I'm taking the thicker stuff I think it's about an inch or three quarters of an inch wide and I'm just gluing it in half and then I'll make a little shoestring bow for this wreath too. The tree with the green background is going to get a little red pipberry wreath. I'm going to start by just doing one wreath 
circle and then I'm going to add some additional pit berries on the outside of the circle just to make it look a little bit more substantial. This one's going to get a chenille stem bow in the color of green and I think this trio turned out really cute. Now the reason I cut them flat is because I have this little piece of rustic pallet wood that I want to stand them on, but I want the center one to be a little bit taller. So I'm just using this tumbling tower block and I'm hot gluing it to the back of the wood piece and that will elevate the middle tree. Before I add the trees, I wanted to get this plank and that tumbling tower block the same color. So I'm using a wash of water and burnt umber acrylic paint. I'm just going to brush it on and the pallet wood will soak it up really nicely. I had to give the little tumbling tower block a couple of coats and actually even just dry brush a little bit of the burnt umber directly from the jar. So remember when I said at the beginning of this project that things are going to evolve, this is what I meant. I didn't like the natural wood look. Now that I had stained the plank that they're going to sit on, I wanted everything to look really put together. So I'm just taking a very small brush and some of the same stain that I used on the wood plank. And I'm just gonna very gently and carefully go around all of the natural wood pieces of the trees. Everything's dry, so now I can start assembling my little project. I'm using hot glue and I'm just going to be pressing each of the little trees down onto the wood plank. This is the green one that has the cute little pit berry wreath and I thought that would be a good one to have in the center because it has a chenille stem and the other two have gingham ribbon bows. The other two trees are going to go on the plank itself and I just got them sticking out a little bit about half an inch past the end of the wood plank and sort of in the middle of the wood plank so there's a little bit of a lip in front of them. I'm going to add some little pine sprigs and some more pine cones and really dress up this little guy so he looks absolutely adorable. I even added a couple of red pip berries just to bring everything together. I think this turned out really sweet. Thank you so much to my current subscribers. I really love you guys. You have helped me grow from nothing to something and I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'd love for you to stick around by hitting that red subscribe button too. For this project, I wanted to do a little bit of a pine cone and buffalo check theme. I'm using this bag from the Dollar Tree and I'm cutting it out and I'm going to glue it on top of this palette. Now, you don't end up seeing a lot of this on the finished product, so I probably could have skipped this step altogether. I just used some Mod Podge and I put a generous amount because this is a plastic bag and I wanted to make sure that it was going to stick really well. So I'm just using a brush to apply the Mod Podge and then I'll press it down and give it some time to dry. I'm going to cut out just the edges of the palette, so just the pieces on the sides, but again, didn't need to do this because you don't notice it. But I did take my X-Acto knife and went all around the edges as well, just to cut off any of the excess bag. I'm using a piece of drop cloth and I'm gonna cut it into a square that's probably about two inches smaller than the palette itself. Then I'm going to do some fraying of the edges of this drop cloth because I really like that look. I think it's worn and rustic and really lends itself to farmhouse style. 
when I fray the edges of something like drop cloth, even though you think you're cutting it in a square that is totally horizontal and vertical in regards to how the fibers are in there, it's always a little kitty wampus. So what I tend to do is, first of all, I use these little scoring tools from the Dollar Tree. They're perfect to kind of just pick out any of the strands that you want to pull out and then it just gives you more control over what is being pulled out. I also use scissors to trim where I need to stop the threads from fraying. So for example, on the bottom part here, you can see that one edge is really long and the other edge is on the shorter side. So then what I can do is I take my scissors and I snip those fibers in the center where I want the fraying to stop and then I can make it look more even all the way around. I'm just going to use some hot glue in all four of the corners of the fabric and that will hold it in place. I decided to try something a little different so I went over to my Cricut Joy and I created the, this little stencil. I'm using Dollar Tree vinyl and Dollar Tree transfer tape. The transfer tape is great but the vinyl itself has hardly any sticky on the back of it and it's very thin compared to higher quality vinyls. So I would not recommend to use this. I figured I would just give it a shot but I don't think I'll be using this in in the future anymore. Using some black paint and my Dollar Tree stencil brush, I'm just going to be pouncing up and down into the letters, making sure that I get a good amount of paint on there, not heavy, but lightly and going over it a couple of different times. That'll make sure that my paint goes right into the fabric and it all looks nice and crisp. Here comes the best part, the reveal. And as I was trying to pull this off, I realized that yes, this Dollar Tree vinyl does have quite a bit of sticky on it. I think the transfer tape was just a little too strong as well. And it was just not wanting to let go of the original decal. So what I'm gonna do next time is probably just take that stencil and just place it down without any transfer tape. I am going to take a whole bunch of pine cones and fill up the exterior of this sign. And this is where I ended up covering up the majority of that buffalo check pattern, but that's okay because I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I'm just using hot glue for the pine cones and I'm going to place them in different directions so they're not all looking exactly the same. I also kind of added a couple of different rows and I just wanted this to look nice and full. I thought it would be super cute to add some bottle brush trees so I trimmed off all the bottoms and for each of the larger ones I'm just going to go ahead and kind of part the hairs at the back or the fibers or whatever you want to call it and then fluff up the front a little bit. Making it flat towards the back is going to help it adhere better and not have it stick out so far. You do have to use quite a bit of hot glue and you've got to hold it down for a little bit until it sets, but this turned out super cute. I really only had to part the hairs on the back of the two taller trees. All of the other ones were pretty good at just being able to sit in there without sticking out too far. I added multiple styles and sizes, and I think this part turned out so adorable. Any of the little gaps at the bottom where you could still kind of see where there aren't any pine cones, I just grabbed some of my little mini hemlock cones and put them in there to fill that section up. If you've been hanging around on my channel for a while, you know I'm not into bows that much, but I decided that this one needed a nice fluffy buffalo check bow. This sign is actually going to be on my front door. I have a greenery wreath hanging on the bottom half of my storm door, and this is going to go on my inside door. So the only thing that I'm doing with this is 
really simply just folding over the ribbons and holding them in place in the center. Then I'm just going to use another little piece of ribbon to tie it all off. And then I'll add two tails to the back, which I'll also tie on. And then I'm going to just glue it with a chenille stem onto the back of the sign at the bottom. I also gave the pine cones a little kiss of snow just using my stencil brush and some white chalk paint. And now I'm inking up a rubber stamp, which is from my scrapbooking days. And I'm going to place that on the one side of the Mary. And then I have a little stamp with two little trees that I'm going to add to the other side. And then this wreath or sign is ready to hang on my front door. I hope you enjoyed today's projects and if you did I would love it if you could give me a thumbs up that really gets me noticed on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching I really appreciate it. If you're looking for some more Christmas inspiration here's a couple more videos you might be interested in. Bye for now!